Hey guys, we're back again. Uh, we're going to be addressing some additional questions from Reddit. Right now, commercial real estate's been a very hot topic. And I've, I've been talking to a lot of my staff and friends that you're going to see more of these content and more of these news come out in you know, CNBC, Wall Street Journals, how CRE is in crisis. And with that, there's going to be a lot of questions people um, trying to take advantage or learning different asset classes or strategies. So I thought i take on uh, this question here on Reddit. Has anyone here done any real estate development? I have few questions. And there's three bullet points. One, I found some commercial land for sale and found the zoning code. But the zoning ordinance is incredibly vague. And I have no idea if my use is permitted. How do I make that determination? Great question. Zoning is very tough. Each, you know, each county, city... Um, even districts, submarkets have different ordinances. So uh, depending on the use, it seems like you want to use it for commercial, for potential housing for RV and boat vehicles. So that will fall the commercial or some cities might see that as industrial because what's being used there. So being general, just to answer a few aspects of zoning, uh, like I said, each state's different. But typically when you see an R1, that's residential zoning. So some of the numbers that come after it, not all the time, is going to be how high you can go. So R2 zoning can do like, you know, a multifamily, which is an apartment. Usually R1 zoning is single family uh, zoning area. And typically commercial, you're going to see C, right? As in car, C1, C2, uh, manufacturing, industrial, you're going to see IL or M. Um, and hospitality will fall under commercial as well too, as well as retail assets like Starbucks. So you have to know if, if that zone is C1 or C2 or whatever it may be, that gives you some comfort level that land can be used for commercial use. So you will fall under that. That's number one. Uh, number two question is, assuming it's permitted by the zoning code, do I still need to submit some kind of plans to the county after buying the land? I have no idea what the process is like. And, and look, I think a lot of people are like that. I mean, even commercial real estate professionals who are not in development, they may know a little bit about, about the zoning and some of the permitting process, but they're not going to be expert. So usually uh, you're going to have architect or engineering that's going to be able to help you with the process. Um, long as there's no rezoning or variance required, it may be just administrative. So what that administrative means, you have to go into the city, uh, do a permit check, uh, provide what you're going to use it for, and typically you'll c go with an architectural plan. And that's the, that's the process. But of course, that you're not going to do that until you purchase the, the property. And I think that segues into the, your, number uh, your number three question. As a general question, how do developers normally buy land without knowing whether the usage will be approved? That seems like a huge risk. It's a fair question. Um, so... Like any transaction, uh, when you're interested in, in a property, right? It, it could be an apartment building, retail, hotel, or land. You typically negotiate through something called letter of intent. It's not binding. Letter of intent really just kind of outlines your business terms. How much, you know, your purchase price, your feasibility or due diligence period, which is your inspection period also. And if you're going to get financing, uh, what kind of materials or sellers need to do provide you for due diligence purposes, like property taxes or insurance or uh, rent and rolls, things like that. But if it's land, you're just not going to have too many items there. Um, but uh, unlike traditional building transactions, like a typical building transaction that you have tenants and they're paying rent, land transaction takes a little bit longer. So um, this is a general rule. But if you're trying to purchase a building, you might say, look, I want to have 30 days of due diligence, inspection, feasibility period where you get to inspect the property, conduct your third party report, such as Alta survey, which is American land title survey, which kind of outlines the meets and bounds of your property. So, you know, which what the property boundaries look like, if there's easements or encroachments, public utilities, and also do something called PCR, property condition reports, or phase one, or ESA, which stands for more environmental assessment. So you can do those. With land, you still, you're still you probably not going to do any PCR report because there's no physical building. It will be land. So you'll probably conduct an environmental survey 
an Alta survey. But then during that period, you need to figure out what the city, what you need to use it for and see if the city will approve that use. So typically on a regular deal is 30 day due diligence and typically 30 day closing. I mean, that shifts depending on the buyers and seller, but typically it's due diligence period is 30, 30 to 45 day period and closing is 30 to 45, okay? On a land purchase, you're gonna have a longer feasibility period, like 120 days or 180 days. And it's contingent upon you getting approval for your use with the city too, that could be negotiated. So then it could be 120, 150, 180 days for your inspection period. And you can close 30 days after that period. So what that inspection period really means is you have 120 days to do your inspection, the land survey, going to the city, engaging the engineering to do that. And after 20 days, if you don't feel comfortable, you can still walk away from the deal and still get your deposit back. However, the money you spend are called sunk costs, meaning that as cost of doing business. So you might, you know, you might have dropped in 10,000 to maybe $15,000 doing your feasibility, which is something that you have to eat. So yeah, you're right. There's some more risk associated with it, but you know, there's a lot of developers out there. So, you know, good, you know, a lot of people have come before you. So uh, it's something that you can learn and do. But as your first real estate, uh, real estate deal, I wouldn't recommend development. I will, you know, have you started something with that's more cash flowing, that's more tangible, there's fixture improvements already there. I, I think that might de-risk um, some of the development, uh, construction, uh, timing, all those different type of elements that you might see with a development deal. And if you want to uh, learn more about risk, click here. I made a video. Uh, regarding risk with four food groups of core core plus value add and opportunistic so check out that video cool. hey guys thanks for checking out the video again and joining us if you found this uh, content valuable subscribe follow and share